Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric equation, a cubic trigonometric equation in three different ways. So normally I will introduce two methods, but this time it's kind of fun. I thought about it and I will be using three methods. Let's start with the first one. The first method basically involves using the formula for sine of 3x. And sine of 3x can be written as 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x. And if I do that, and put everything on the same side, I get the following. And then I can factor out 2 sine x. And from here I get 1 minus 2 sine squared x equals 0. By setting each factor equal to 0, from here I get sine x equals 0, which obviously has solutions where x is equal to n pi. So if x is a multiple of pi, then sine x is going to be 0. And from here, we actually get two solutions, but let's write it this way first. Sine squared x is equal to 1 half. This means that sine x can be, you know, square root of 1 half, which is 1 over root 2, or you can write it as root 2 over 2, or the opposite. Obviously, there are no extraneous solutions here because we did not square both sides or something. We just used a formula. Now, from here, we get a bunch of different solutions. For example, if sine x is equal to root 2 over 2, x can be written as pi over 4. That's the smallest angle that satisfies this equation. Plus, you can add multiples of 2 pi. I mean, you, can, you don't have to use the same variable. Obviously, they can be different. But let's just go ahead and use the same one. Stick with n all the time. And we can just add 2 n pi to it. Or we can also subtract the pi over 4 from pi, which gives us 3 pi over 4. And then, of course, do the same thing, plus 2 and pi. That's going to come from the positive one. And from the negative one, we're going to be getting something similar. But this time, we're going to be in the third and fourth quadrant. If you think about it, this is the, you know, the positive solutions. And these are going to be the negative solutions. So x is going, I mean, by negative, I mean the sine value is going to be negative on that interval. So x is, can be, x can be written as 5 pi over 4 plus 2 n pi, or x can be 7 pi over 4 plus 2 n pi. So all of these are basically solutions to this equation you can definitely check. Okay, this is my first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at our second method. Now the second method involves, and I believe I'm just going to write the number there. The second method involves uh, writing this as a sum and difference. So the average of 3x and x is 2x. Therefore, I can write this as sine of 2x plus x and sine of 2x minus x. Great. This is a really good strategy that we use with sum to product formulas. And now I can expand it sine 2x cosine x plus sine x cosine of 2x. And then on the right hand side, same thing with the minus sine. Sine 2x cosine x minus sine x cosine 2x. So the pattern is sine, cosine, sine, cosine. And then these two terms are going to cancel out. Let's put everything on the same side. 2 sine x cosine of 2x is equal to 0. And divide both sides by 2 and you're going to get sine x cosine 2x as a product is equal to 0. Obviously from here we are supposed to get the same solutions. If sine x is equal to 0, as you know from before, x can be written as n pi where pi is, you know, n pi is a multiple of pi basically. From here, we get a bunch of different solutions. So if cosine of 2x is 0, then 2x can be written as, now think about it, where cosine is 0 on the unit circle at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So we can say that pi over 2 plus, of course, 2 and pi, and divide both sides by 2, and you're going to get this one. So that's going to give us a set of solutions. But of course, at the same time, we can do 3 pi over 2 plus, you know, uh, 2 n pi and dividing both sides by 4, you're going to get 2 pi over 4 plus um, n times pi. So this is going to give us another set of solutions for this one and so on and so forth. But here's the thing. When you have, uh, you know, when you're adding multiples of pi, you're actually going to get two solutions from each one of these. Of course, if you're looking for solutions on the interval, half close interval 0 to 2 pi. So from here, for example, I can get pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4, right? And from here I get 3 pi over 4 and 
7 pi over 4. Just like before, remember we were finding four different solutions with the 2n pi in it, pretty much the same thing happens here. Now let's take a look at the third method. The third method I think is also fun. And if you ask me which one is my favorite, I can't tell you because I don't know. They're all good, I guess. You can pick one. So in general, let's talk about this thing in general first. Uh, if you have a trigonometric equation with sine, like sine alpha equals sine beta, this means two things. Either alpha can be written as beta plus 2 and pi, or alpha can be written as pi minus beta plus 2 and pi. Because uh, there are two angles whose signs is, are equal, uh, they're, comp uh, they're supplementary angles, not complementary, they are up to 180 in degrees. Okay, great. So from here I can safely say that 3x is equal to x plus 2 and pi. If I subtract x, I get 2x equals 2 and pi, which means x equals n pi. And we found the same solution before, obviously. That should be no surprise. Or 3x can be written as pi minus x plus 2 and pi. Put the x's on the same side and something interesting is going to happen. So I'm going to show you a more compact way to express the second set of solutions. And at the end, I'm going to show you something visual. All right, ready? x is equal to pi over 4 plus. Now, if you divide both sides by 4, you're going to get n times pi over 2 from here. And now if you make a common denominator, you're going to get pi plus 2n pi divided by 4. And by factoring out, by factoring out the pi here, you can basically write the second set of solutions as 2n plus 1 multiplied by pi over 4, which indicates the odd multiples of pi over 4 are also going to be solutions. As before, remember we talked about pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4, and you can express this in a much more compact way. And here's the visual. I wanted to show you this because this is kind of fun. The graph of y equals sine 3x and y equals sine x graphed together and uh, you can see where they intersect. Obviously at 0 and all multiples of pi we have solutions like 0, pi, 2 pi, so on and so forth. And we also have solutions at odd multiples of pi over 4 which is pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.